Hey, Facebook, Kirk Duckwell here with the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Today, we're going to be talking about consumer awareness in the industry. Uh, something that I, I like to bring up uh, when meeting with buyers and sellers is, is a little bit of you, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, there's certain things that uh, y you may not realize it's the way something shouldn't be going unless somebody shows you a different way. So we're going to kind of touch on some topics that um, a lot of agents don't like to talk about. So, all right. You guys ready? Ready. Go. Okay. Stick around. We'll have a, probably an abbreviated after show because Dan has got to go hang out with his sister. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. And then make sure we're nice and close to the mics because Facebook doesn't like picking up our mic volume unless we're super close. Okay. Is that this close enough? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> yes. That should be good. Actually, here, talk. Talk, talk, talk. Okay. Cool. We're good. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Are you thinking about buying or selling a house or just want to know what might be going on with one of your biggest investments? Then come hang out with us for a little while. Hi, I'm Kirk Duckwall. Welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show, sponsored by Bricks Real Estate Network Title. Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preby with Bell Bank Mortgage. And James Dolson with Country Financial. If you have any questions, make sure you give us a call at 651-303-0019. Again, 651-303-0019. You can also check us out online anytime at BricksTwinCities.com where you can find the latest and greatest searching and researching tools. I'd like to thank Danny Deedle, broker with Bricks Real Estate, for coming in today. It's going. Sorry. And Chad Preby, thank hey, you. Thanks I think for having me. I think I did a better job of pronouncing your guys' name than mine in the intro there. <laughs> hey, good job. Sometimes I just forget who I am. All right, today we're going to be talking about consumer awareness in real estate. Um, some of the things that maybe people don't know that something could have been done or should have been done differently than the way they may have experienced it. And this is the you don't know what you don't know. Um, and, and kind of a brief breakdown on this is just because a listing agent sold a home does not mean they did a good job of selling a home, right? If a consumer was shorted 14% on what they could have gotten and when they thought they maybe were getting s good service, is that agent then doing their job or were they just trying to be salesy and get it sold? Well, I, I, th I think part of that too is uh, some agents don't even know that they're not doing a good job. So it's not even that they're salesy. They just don't have the technical ability to price correctly. Right. Well, and for their own market. Right. So I think, you know, part, yeah, part of it is, is, is learning and educating and I know that's one of the big things that we consistently talk about that we're huge advocates of at Bricks Real Estate you know educating agents making sure they understand how to price houses for buyers and sellers right to make sure you're not I mean you brought up the point earlier of you know just because you win in multiple offers did you do your job for your client yeah it's anybody can win in multiple offer situation it is are you winning at uh, terms that are still really acceptable to the market because if, if a home is priced at three hundred thousand dollars and its true value is in that like three twenty five three thirty five range you know how you win it guaranteed you buy it for four hundred thousand dollars without any contingencies um, all sorts of appraisal guarantees and things like that so you still have to have a good understanding of what true resale ability would be and is the buyer getting into a home that they are going to be uh, if they have to move in two or three years, are they going to be digging themselves out of a big financial hole? That's so just winning a multiple offers isn't good enough. It's still having uh, the ability to understand that you are you are uh, buying correctly. Yeah, it, and that's one of the things I think people you know on the buy side, and we'll get into this more, but just not taking the time to actually evaluate tolerable risk. You know, uh, where the market is right now, this is a time where somebody could end up paying, if they're not careful, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 more than that house might be able to sell for later this fall, next right. spring, okay? And is that a safety risk you're willing to take to get that house today? 
Right. You know, and, uh, you know, factors like um, job security, um, how long you're going to be in the home. Um, there's all sorts of different variables that can actually impact what the value of a home is to different buyers. So if somebody looks at a house and goes, I'm going to be in this house for the next 30 years. They can actually spend more money on that house to ensure that they get it because they have a longer time frame uh, to absorb any risk of overpaying. Whereas if somebody's going to move in two years, if you overpay by ten or fifteen thousand dollars, that that's going to come around real fast, and you have a much shorter time time frame to spread that risk out. Well, and I, I have an example. Uh, you know, I had a property last year where you know, and it's it's always tough to do this, right? Where somebody did an evaluation or somebody did a purchase with somebody who didn't do their homework as an agent. Mm -hmm. And now I'm having to be the one who goes, well, you overpaid back when you bought it. And now the market isn't necessarily going to get you what you want. He didn't know he was going to be moving in a year. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, we're dealing with people's biggest financial transactions. It's really, really important that, that your agent does, does their job. You know, that if something does not go necessarily the way that you're hoping <laughs> that there is that safety that's right. there. Yeah, and as a general framework, um, you know, up until this point, I think you and I were pretty much in agreement that three years is kind of like the start to be the break-even point yeah. where buying versus renting makes sense. I personally think that's extended out here a little bit as there is, uh, while the market is moving along just fine right now, there is more risk uh, potential risk to the market now than there has been in a decade. Well, and I think I think something I want to be real clear about is is, and this is one of the reasons I got started on that market meter thing, which, yeah, the market in certain sectors is having one of its best years, in a very very long time. Right, other sectors are not doing well at all. Right, there are it, there are parts of the market that. Um, I actually was uh, looking at a, a million dollar property and all so so like like median sale price range 200 to 400 K single family home. That's a 10 and a one to 10 scale uh, as far as as uh, one being a buyer's market 10 being a seller's market. The million dollar market. I was a 1.35 yeah. complete opposite of, of of that. Right. There's just nothing for movement. Right. right? So, uh, and, and, and I mean, that's a market that it, it never... And, and that, that'll that change, too, depending on area. There are some areas where the million-dollar-plus market is, is still moving very well. Booming. Yes, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm looking at the, the, the Twin Cities, 13 right. County as a whole. And that's that's the thing with, with the, the, you know, you want to analyze, and this is the key to an agent doing their job. You want to analyze every market, every house, individually right. you cannot go off of just what the media is saying um well you know what guys i do a lot of i work with a lot of first-time home buyers and, and with this market today that we're in i think you know yeah obviously we're in sales but i, I like to call us educators more because if we set that first-time home buyer up correctly because we know the, the what is the average uh, time in a house on a first-time home buyer three to five years seven years i would say it's, it's two to four for for a first time home first buyer, time I buyer, think yeah. the Twin Cities everybody average is like seven to nine. It, okay. Yeah, it actually the national average for people being in a home actually just crossed eight eight years. Okay. Eight years. Okay. Um, historically, have been kind of five to seven. So it is people are extending longer, which is also going to have an impact on uh, listing inventory, and that's part of the reason you're seeing inventory down. Right. Yeah. Well, in some of these loan programs, you're putting minimal down payments of three three and a half percent. So if you're in that home two to four years or eight years, and we have something happen in the market, and you're already paying at that high price point, you, you can find yourself being in trouble down the road. Right. Well, and I think this is talking about goals. Um, right. I know I was going to do this in the second segment, but hey, we got into buying. So, you know, w Chad, when somebody comes to you as a first-time buyer, mm -hmm. or any buyer, right, y you know, what is the route that, sh well, what is it that you see uh, certain lending uh, companies or, or uh, loan officers do that maybe isn't the best approach versus how it should be approached? That's a good question. You know, and, and I, I everybody learns, right? So you never want to assume what someone wants or needs until you talk to them about your goals. And, and one big thing I talk about right away with someone is what can you afford every month for a payment? 
not only the principal and interest, but the taxes and insurance? And then what do you have left over after that in the bank? Because we talked about this before the show. If the furnace goes out or, or you know, something happens in that property and, you're, and, you're, and you don't have the money to fix it, then I'm not doing a good service for you. So, you know, I want to learn about your down payment. I want to learn about your credit, how long you're going to live in that home. And then I can determine what product is going to be best for you because without knowing that, I'm guessing. Well, right. And, and sometimes pe people are low payment, low payment, low payment. But y the point you brought up, if they're only going to be in the home for three to eight years, maybe that extra $200 a month for a 20 year or a 15 year is going to be extremely advantageous to them when it comes time to sell. Right. Instead of build throwing the money at interest, you're throwing it towards principal. Build that equity. So when you sell, you have more opportunity. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, a, little, a little bit more safety buffer as, as to the market. Um, well, and uh, on that note, I mean, principal or a, mor a mortgage in general is really you can finish up Danny but I'm just giving you the signal that we have one minute left okay. it's actually 42 seconds left in the <laughs> segment uh, <laughs> think of home ownership as like forced a forced savings account so you, you you make your payment and if you think you're gonna save the money like in another vehicle besides your mortgage payment a lot of people don't so it's um, so even having a little bit higher payment kind of forces you to that's the way I do it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the only way. way All right, we're right. going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, when we come back, I, I just want to kind of finish up with the buyer's representation piece. You're giving me these commercial that break signal? Just okay. The wind. All right. So we'll be right back. Thanks for tuning in to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Ready to roll? Let me just check Facebook, see if there's any questions. Here we go. Welcome back to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show on AM 950. Today we're talking about consumer awareness as to things you, you want to pay attention to um, as you're out there looking at maybe starting the buying or selling process and you're trying to hire a professional uh, to assist with that. You know, one of the things I want to uh, wrap up with on, on the uh, buying side of, of the process is that the way a lot of agents start this process um, with, with just, you know, just diving in and, and saying, let's just go out and look at a few homes, right? And figure out what it is you like. You know, and, and and never got to again, like you're saying, Chad, the goals of what it is that they want. Because if somebody says they're looking for a, a condo or a townhouse, well, they're going to need a certain loan product that may be better for them or a fixer right. upper. Yep. Um, and and so you need to find out that piece. Um, also, what is it, what is it they want to get out of the property, right? If if you're sitting there just doing showing after showing after showing and you're not taking the time to really analyze and, and think about it, we do this when we go out to, to lunch or out to dinner. We figure out what kind of food are we hungry for. Then we go there and we order off of the menu uh, what it is and then what size it is that, that we want, right? right? We take the time to think about that. Or we go buy a vehicle. I need a vehicle for X. But the approach of let's just go out and look at some homes is like putting on a blindfold, walking into a car lot and saying, I want to test drive this vehicle, right? I want to test drive this without ever talking about, oh, you want a larger yard. Okay, maybe maybe South Minneapolis is not where we should be looking at houses. Oh, you want a home that, that isn't going to have older home things or better energy efficiency? Okay, maybe 1930s houses <laughs> isn't what we should be doing. Right. No buyers want to go look at 50 homes for the most part, unless they're real estate agents in training. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Because there's what's called buyer fatigue, mm. right? What 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 would what you say, Danny? Even if they say, "I love looking at homes," I'm not picky. How many homes is it before they get frustrated? Oh God, it's not much. 14, um, maybe 10. Yeah, maybe. Right. It, it kind of depends too if they're if they're looking at one or two a time. It's it's probably how many times they're going out. Yeah. But I'd say people the frustration starts to set in probably around yeah ten to fifteen homes and even three times out. Yeah. And 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 it's it's even tougher for buyers that have been through the process once before. Like 
I have to now clear the hurdle for the mistakes that maybe a previous agent made, right? That, you know, I remember a good client of mine, she's like, all I wanted to do was look at the pretty houses that I saw online and you kept telling me no, and then I realized why, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It was, you were actually looking out for me. You were actually trying to help going down that road and, 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 and she got it and Sa Sam was the same way, you know? Um, that that you know you don't want to be looking at the wrong homes where the right when the right homes are selling it's extremely frustrating um and and there's nothing worse than to watch a buyer miss out on a home that they could have gone to and could have seen if they weren't looking at the wrong homes but instead they chose the other ones to look at first and by the time they got to the other one they already had an accepted offer that doesn't feel good ever right you know and so an agent that takes the time to actually talk about what it is you want, that's, that's, that's seriously important. I know we all want to get out and look at homes. That's the fun part. But you're not going to get to that fun part and really have it unless you do that upfront step. Exactly. Um, okay, let's talk about selling a little bit. So th this whole conversation got started um, because I, was, uh, I had two different listing appointments yesterday. And, and I, I like to bring um, some of those automated evaluations to show their error rate. And um, the guy made a point to me of, well, I'm having, I'm having three other agents come in to, to do an analysis. You know, I trust that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're full time, that they're, they're competent in what they're doing. And I immediately thought, wow, you have way more faith in this industry than I do <laughs> as far as the competency of agents. And that's one of the things in the classes that, that I do. Is there's a piece called Competency of Agents and Pricing. I mean, list price is not an accurate reflection of value. No. Right? I can go through, and that's one of the things I do with my buyers is I click through listings, and I go, you know, listed for this, sold for this, listed for this, sold for that. And, and half are, are typical, well, not quite half. Let's say 48% uh, are above, 48% are below, and there's the 4% in the middle <laughs> that are actually at list price. Um, what really got me uh, interested was I wanted to see, you know, how, what were my averages of where was my margin of error on picking list prices. So I added up all my uh, CMAs that I ever did uh, through, the, through the history of, of being in, in this career. And I found that 96% uh, of the time I was within 5%. Um, the, some of those automated appraisals, uh, with off-market properties, they're right only 41% of the time. Wow. Within, within 5%, right? That's scary. And you're when you say automated appraisal, you're referring to? To, to you know, your... The, not appraisal, the automated valuation. Va automated valuation, right. yes, yeah. yes. So the ones you find online on right. your third-party sites. Um, and, and so I was curious, what is the average agent in the Twin Cities as far as their pricing ability? And uh, the average agent is off by 15.8% from original list price to sold price. And for any agents listening, you can find this information on InfoSparks and, and pull up the stats. It's right there between original list price and, and sold price for all listings in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. That's so a lot of money. It, it is a lot of money. And it's a lot of wasted time of sellers. Well, and Th that's the big thing is it's it's setting appropriate expectations right. and well right and, and and i i have this new sheet called the seller's expectations sheet and and it's like place what's important to you and one of them is a certain price range um work that you need to do to the home uh the timeliness of the sale a certain time of year of the sale and actually getting the home sold and i then in, in, in quotes have, yes, some people don't actually need to sell or care if they sell their home. Yep. And so putting people through that mental exercise is if I come to you and I give you a real honest opinion of price, not something that makes you think that I'm going to do it because I told you a high number, right. are you going to take that seriously and, and, and trust that? Or do you really want to get a set price? Do you really want to actually get it sold? Because, I, like I said, I had two listing appointments. One person wanted to get it sold, and it didn't appear the other person wanted to get it sold. So the, uh, the number that agents talk about a lot that I think is, is extremely misleading as well is... Uh, Percentage of price received? Yeah, to list price. So if you, 
if you list a $250,000 house for $200,000, guess what? Your stats are going to be fantastic. Right. right. So it is, it's very misleading. So you can have five agents in, and the perception can be, if you look at that number, all five agents could have really good numbers. Um, but th there is a strategy to pricing, and if you price too low, it can uh, end up hurting you. Um, it is one of the worst metrics, and I think if agents are leading with that, I would be yeah, it, no, it's 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 a gross metric. It, it, it's yeah. it, 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 it's like the number of homes you sell. You know what? If an agent's selling more than than ten, twelve houses as a listing agent a year, okay, they're 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 in they're in the game. But but you get these people that are like, I sell a hundred homes. Well, first of all, you probably don't. You probably have a team that's helping you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's you can do a good job if you are turning homes. That's that's that again. It's a gross stat in right. a sense. Um, yeah, and it, it becomes a, a little misleading. So it's like th there is a point of certain amount of homes lends to um, credibility. Yes. But there is also a point where, like, the mega effect, um, there's almost diminished returns at some point when you get to a certain size. Um, yes, you can have s all the systems in place. Um, we won't get into yeah. well, the I mean conversation I on. With just uh, about a minute left, this show goes so quick. Yeah, <laughs> um but I think a, a good stat is I tend to like to price in the middle or low side of the range, but yet my price per square foot received is uh, as bricks. We're one of the highest in the Twin Cities. This is a clear indicator that if you price well and you have good marketing, it is going to go into that multiples and you can drive that high sale price. So beware of somebody who's quote unquote trying to buy a listing with a really high sale price. Also be aware of somebody who wants to put a low sale price but isn't providing the marketing to drive a high amount of buyers in. People get so wrapped up in in uh, a set price. If, if you're within 5% of your agent, okay, you guys are basically on the same page. Okay, then it's what kind of marketing are they providing? That's what I would be looking at. Um, so yeah, you just don't want to get so wound up. Um, but yeah, again, beware of that, that uh, trying to buy a listing. If uh, we're saying 15% differential is the average agent, that means there's gonna be some that are worse than that. Yeah, so. well, and then there, there's of course the pitfalls of overpricing and uh, it can end up uh, costing you pretty significantly on the net in addition to wasted time and energy. Yeah, so uh, we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, you can always check us out, BricksTwinCities.com. We have our, our publications under there, the Smart Seller, the Smart Buyer, and just the Smart Series. Check it out. We'll be back next week. Yeah, I, I know I did this um, – this video uh, on uh, my YouTube channel. So for anybody watching, yes, I'm going to promote my YouTube channel for a second, Danny. Uh, if you go to the House Geeks YouTube channel, uh, it's, it's like the dirty little secret that they don't want you to know. Yeah. And, it, and it's all about how uh, listing agents will use certain stats to convince the consumer to use them when the metrics are complete BS, right? That, that it, it, that's not showing real value yeah. you know um the uh, days on market in a sense that's a real tricky one because you know I, I was using like walmart as an example right you look at macy's macy's can price a pair of levi's at 49.95 mm -hmm. you go to walmart and that same pair is 29.95 okay how is that? Well, Macy's provides a great consumer experience for the most part, right? They make, they set the stage, they have the environment, they 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 target uh, who who they want to, you know, they're they're advertising, right? They're, they're they're trying to hone in on the consumer, right? And so in return, they're able to sell the product at a higher price. Right. Where, you know, you just do blast marketing and price something cheap enough. You're going to sell a lot of it. Does that mean you're actually doing a good job? Does that mean you're actually – I mean, yeah, for their model, they're doing a good job. But if you are you know, wanting to get the most money for your product, that approach of you know, sell as many as possible as fast as possible isn't necessarily providing the quality of marketing, that, 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 that honing in on – who is the, the most likely buyers you want to could keep the listing around? So interesting. Um, let's see. I think 
Oh, yeah. You know, one last thing. Vetting of offers and vetting of agents on the listing side of things. Like, just because an offer comes in, well, does it have a pre-approval? I've seen many offers that haven't come with a pre-approval. Then who is that pre-approval with? Yep. Are they reputable? Yep. You know? Um, what What's the likelihood of it being able to close? I actually had a funny conversation with a for sale by owner person who called me up. And I, I sent out one of my expired packets. And, and she's like, oh, hey, thank you very much for the, the information. It was all helpful. I don't know if you know this, Kirk, but... You, you, you actually showed my house a while back and, and you said it was overpriced in the feedback and, 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 and then I, and I sold it though. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and and sh I'm like, now I'm looking at your listing right now. Now, since I showed it, you've dropped the price $30,000. <laughs> She's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, no, I showed it on this date and this date you dropped the price and then you dropped it 30000 Oh, okay. And I'm like, so you, s you sold the home. Why, why are you calling? And she's like, well, it didn't, it didn't work out. It fell through. Mm -hmm. Well, then you didn't sell the house. You had an offer. You right. didn't vet the offer, and it fell apart. Yep. <laughs> right? And I, thi I think it's important to take the time to vet the offers, vet the agents, vet the pre-approvals. Is it likely to close? That's, that's a key piece. Very important. You know? Yeah. Um, and on the buy side, if you're working, you know, as something that a uh, former colleague of mine told me to do, was he, he always used HomeSnap and he would vet the agent, the listing agent of the house. Yeah. So he knew who, you, who he was dealing with. I mean, just easy things you can do to help increase your chances, know more, be more educating. Well, that's all I got. That's all I got. Sounds good. Me all right. Too. See Kelly. you, Facebook. Kelly, she's got any.